We all need food to live. Although eating habits vary from country to country, at some point every person has to sit down and enjoy a meal, sometimes three times a day. But different foods are also fascinating to learn about. Some foods are actually mislabeled and grouped in correctly, and other foods are just plain gross. The best known brands in America have arsenic in their apple juice. From the scary reality that jelly beans might have shellac in them, to the fact that tea enthusiasts are now sipping cups of tea made using panda poop, bon appetit, 20 foods you'll never buy again after knowing how they're made. Rennet for cheese. One of the ingredients you need to make cheese is rennet. Rennet comes from an organic substance that contains the enzyme renin. It's mainly found in the lining of the fourth stomach of young goats, calves, and lambs. It only occurs in these animals when their main diet is still digesting. That's why it's found in the stomachs of dairy-consuming young animals. But it's not just animals that have this component. Plants such as cardoon thistle, artichokes, and nettles also contain a form of this enzyme. These are often used to make vegetarian cheeses. Of the two camps, animal-derived rennet is better for aged cheeses since it lasts longer. Plant rennet can add an element of bitterness to the product if aged for too long, capping most vegetarian cheeses at six months. In most cheese making, rennet is added to the milk either in liquid or paste form. Modern practices also incorporate rennet in tablet and powdered applications, a method that allows the ingredient to be stored longer in warmer climates. There's also a synthesized rennet produced through fermentation. This method is used commonly in contemporary cheese making because it's cost effective and reliable. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. You'll never eat this again knowing how it's made. Hot dogs. In the United States, the ingredients of a hot dog are listed so that all of them are named, starting with the ingredients that make up the highest percentage of the hot dog and ending with the ingredient that makes up the smallest percentage. Even though a hot dog may be listed as containing beef, pork, chicken, or some other simple-sounding meat as a primary ingredient, how the meat is produced is a complicated technical feat. Using special machinery, pieces of meat are scraped shaved or pressed off the bone of beef and pork bones in a process known as advanced meat recovery. Once the meat has more than a certain amount of calcium, that means there are too many bits of bones in it and it now is considered mechanically separated meat. This grisly meat is cooked and churned into a paste, at which point other ingredients are added. Hot dogs are the result of a blend of mashed up pork and beef trimmings that are swirled together with processed chicken trimmings, food starch, flavorings, corn syrup, and lots of water. Another ingredient added to hot dogs is sodium nitrate, which gives the meat its slurry-in-a-tube pink color, making it look fresh and familiar to consumers. Craving hot dogs? Sound off below in the comments using hashtag missing topic. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? arsenic and apple juice. Say the word arsenic and people usually think of poison. Of course, they're right. There's no doubt that arsenic can kill you, and it can do so quickly by disrupting the formation of ATP, the compound critical for energy production in cells or slowly by triggering cancer. Or it can do nothing. It all comes down to the form of arsenic that's encountered and, of course, the dose. We do encounter arsenic. About that, there's no doubt. It occurs naturally in minerals and in soil from where it can migrate into crops or leach into water. So it comes as no surprise that small amounts of arsenic can be found in apple juice. But one TV show, The Dr. Oz Show, blew this way out of proportion. Viewers were told that consumers, children in particular, may be drinking apple juice that had levels of arsenic above 10 parts per billion, the level that the Environmental Protection Agency and the Food and Drug Administration in the U.S considered to be the safe limit in drinking water. However, because the Oz Show's findings were shared with FDA before the program aired, the agency carried out its own tests on the same samples that were implicated as having high levels. The findings differed from those reported by the lab used by the Dr. Oz Show. The highest levels found were 6 parts per billion, lower than the 10 parts per billion standard for drinking water. So, don't worry. 
Drinking apple juice won't poison you with arsenic. Human hair and bread. Bread is a staple for many people's lives around the world. It's nourishing, sustaining, and gives us energy. Bread is the basis of so many meals. The bricks that hold sandwich ingredients, spreads, and veggies together. Eating bread is as basic to us as drinking water. Unfortunately, the bread you're buying contains something unexpected. Bread contains L-cysteine, an amino acid used in the baking industry as dough conditioner. But did you know that L-cysteine is most often derived from human hair? It's true, because it's the cheapest source of this acid. While some L-cysteine is directly synthesized in laboratories, most of it is extracted from a cheap and abundant natural protein source, human hair. The hair is dissolved in acid and it's isolated through a chemical process, then packaged and shipped off to commercial bread producers. As a culture, we're far from the idealistic situation of only buying freshly baked loaves from the local baker. Instead, we hop into the store where we buy all of our other groceries and pick up a soft loaf that's on a shelf next to dozens of other soft loaves of delicious bread. This ingredient is hiding among those products, but rest assured, the food companies will not go out of their way to alert you of that. So, be sure to read the ingredient label the next time you shop. Mercury in canned tuna. Recommendations for how often a person should eat canned tuna can vary depending on several factors, including the specific type of tuna, their age, or whether or not they belong to a group that may be more sensitive to the effects of mercury. Certain types of tuna are high in mercury, which can have harmful effects on health in high amounts or in certain populations. Small amounts of mercury present in everyday foods and products may not affect your health. Too much, however, can be poisonous. What is mercury poisoning? It refers to toxicity from mercury consumption. Mercury is a type of toxic metal that we can come into contact with in a variety of ways. The most common cause of mercury poisoning is linked to eating seafood like canned tuna. Mercury itself is naturally occurring, but the amounts in the environment have been on the rise due to industrialization. The metal can make its way into soil and water, and eventually into animals like fish. Mercury is most notable for its neurological effects. In general, experts say that too much mercury may cause anxiety, depression, irritability, memory problems, numbness of the hands, feet, or mouth, tremors, so it's not good. According to food experts, most adults should aim to eat at least 8 ounces of fish per week, which can include canned tuna, beaver butt, and ice cream. Is anything sacred? The next time you have vanilla ice cream or even vanilla flavoring in your food, you may have to think twice about where it comes from, according to researchers. That's because the natural flavoring castorium is obtained from the anal glands of beavers. It's true. It helps provide a vanilla flavor to some dairy products and desserts and accounts for up to 6% of vanilla flavoring used in the industry. But according to reports, synthetic vanilla accounts for about 94% of all vanilla flavoring used in the food industry. Natural vanilla extract accounts for most of the remaining 6%. But beavers can heave a sigh of relief. Their contribution to the food industry now accounts for a tiny fraction of natural vanilla flavoring and tends to be limited to luxury foods and beverages. The thick, odorous secretion from beavers was a lot more common in vanilla products towards the end of the 19th century, where the animals were nearly hunted to extinction to acquire the desirable additive. Thankfully, experts have found a way to extract the flavoring from animals without having to kill them. Extracting this from a live beaver is not the easiest of tasks, as the animals need to be milked in order to retrieve the gooey substance. Red dye made from bugs When Europeans descended on South America in the 1500s, they discovered that the Aztecs were producing vibrant, dyed fabrics that retained their color for an incredibly long time. They were using a bug called cochineal. The cochineal insect is native to Mexico and South America. They're tiny and live on cactus plants, usually the prickly pear cactus. Female insects eat the red cactus berries, which concentrates the color in their bodies. Today, they're harvested mainly in Peru and the Canary Islands on plantations of prickly pear cacti, the bug's preferred host. There, the insects are sun-dried, crushed, and dunked in an acidic alcohol solution to produce the red pigment. About 70,000 insects are needed to produce a pound of dye. Aside from some folks being allergic to it, it has no known health risks. 
although those who keep kosher or choose not to eat animal products will want to keep their distance. In addition to food and textiles, they're also used as a dye in cosmetic products, including lipstick. It may be from bugs, but other synthetic red dyes carry far greater health risks and are derived from either coal or petroleum byproducts. Compared with these sources, bugs might sound positively appetizing. Enhanced chicken. It's becoming less likely that the meat you buy in the supermarket is just meat. After spending years breeding cattle, pigs, and poultry to be leaner, the food industry has been injecting meat with water, salt, and chemicals. Companies say the process, called enhancement, helps shoppers by flavoring the meat so they don't have to. It's been done to turkeys and hams for years and to other meats since 2000. But the process allows the industry to charge the same price, sometimes more, for cheaper grades of meat and to add more salt than many people need or want. Enhanced meat costs as much as untreated meat or more. At most, at most supermarkets, enhanced and plain skinless and boneless chicken breasts cost about $3.99 a pound. But after accounting for just the protein, the treated meat costs 13% more. The increased use of enhancement, which can quadruple the amount of sodium in meat, has coincided with calls by health professionals for the food industry to reduce much of the sodium it adds to food. Meats are naturally low in sodium, but nutrition labels for enhanced meat show that they can have as much as 540 milligrams of sodium in a four ounce portion. The process can add other chemicals too that helps the meat retain the added water and extends its shelf life. Carbon monoxide in packaged meat. Packaging systems containing a variety of different gases have been used on food products for many years. These packaging systems are referred to as modified atmosphere packaging or MAP, and the range of products packaged in MAP include produce like bagged salads, pre-cut vegetables and fruits, snack foods such as potato chips and pastries, seafood, and a variety of beverage products. These and other products are packaged with food-grade gases to maintain an attractive appearance and protect flavor that appeals to consumers. Carbon monoxide systems for meat have been in use in the U.S. for years. However, the system has been used successfully and safely in Norway for over even longer. Red meat products are somewhat like sliced apples. Their color can change rapidly, even though the product is still safe. In fact, Retail stores often discount red meat products that have changed color but are still safe and well within their shelf life. These detrimental effects on foods, including apples and meat, are the result of chemical changes caused by oxygen. But by eliminating the oxygen from the package and adding minute amounts of carbon monoxide along with other protective gases to the headspace of the red meat packages, products like ground beef can maintain their appealing red color throughout their shelf life. Shellac and Jelly Beans If you find yourself investigating the ingredients of a packet of jelly beans, you might find this alarming ingredient, shellac. It turns out that shellac, sometimes known as confectioner's glaze, might not be harmful. But do you want to eat this nail polish ingredient? The word shellac is in the window of almost every nail salon. It's also common in confectionery items requiring a glaze. It's a resin that's secreted by the female lac bug native to the forests of Thailand and India. The secreted resin is scraped from the bark of the tree where the lac bug deposited it, then it's processed and dried and sold in the form of flakes. In order to make liquid shellac, for use in colorants such as nail polish, wood finish, and food glaze, the flakes are dissolved in solvent proper for that application. Liquid shellac is added to colorants so as to make them harder, hence the wide range of applications. Yes. Shellac is natural as it's derived from secretions produced by an insect and is generally deemed safe as a food additive. It can be made toxic by the addition of certain chemicals to use in industrial production. Remember, there's plenty in nature that we don't want to consume or otherwise use in food or personal care products. So, if you love jelly beans, you know there might be shellac in them. Anchovies and Worcestershire sauce it takes 18 months to get this fermented sauce that graces the steaks of so many. Worcestershire sauce has a history to go with its usefulness in flavoring drinks and food, such as Bloody Marys, Caesar salads, steaks, oysters, and deviled eggs. This sauce has its roots in India, 
but was actually created by accident in its namesake town of Worcester, England in 1835. The Lee and Perrins Company says Lord Sandys had returned home to England to retire after successfully governing Bengal, India for many years. He so missed his favorite Indian sauce that he commissioned drug store have owners John Leah and William Perrins to come up with a reasonable substitute. The sauce was bottled and quickly became a hot item with customers. But not so much with vegans. Traditional recipes will include anchovies as one of the main ingredients, although there are some brands to buy or recipes to follow to make this sauce anchovy-free. This sauce is typically made up of barley malt vinegar, spirit vinegar, molasses, sugar, salt, anchovies, tamarind extract, shallots, garlic, and flavorings. Not all brands and recipes have anchovies, although most of them do. You'll need to look for brands marketed as vegan, vegetarian, or specifically labeled as anchovy-free. Gelatin-based food. If kids knew about what actually goes into making their favorite candy, cake, or jello, it's likely they would never touch these things again. Gelatin is one of the ingredients. It's also one of the last that people tend to give up when moving away from animal products because it's so hidden away and far removed from the animal it came from, so it's harder to make the connection. Here's what's actually in it and why we really don't need to eat it. Gelatin is derived from decaying animal skins, boiled and crushed bones, and the connective muscle tissues of cows and pigs who were killed in slaughterhouses. Gelatin is all the body parts of dead animals that the meat industry can't sell as meat products. Bones, muscle tissues, Ligaments, skin, and feet are all commonly used. So no, it's neither vegetarian or vegan. It's upsetting to think about the excitement children feel when eating their favorite candy, in contrast to the suffering that animals endure to make it. If people saw where the gelatin in their candy came from, they would almost certainly reconsider eating it. Gelatin can be found in many candies, cakes, jello, ice cream, yogurt, and marshmallows, as well as cosmetics, vitamin pills, and even photographic film. It's easy to miss, so check these products before you buy them. Wood pulp and shredded cheese. It's not always easy being cheesy. That's the takeaway from the recent reports detailing the use of cellulose, aka wood pulp, and shredded cheese products in the United States. An FDA investigation found that a Pennsylvania company had doctored its so-called Parmesan with a mix of cheap cheddar cheese and wood pulp. The president of the company is currently facing a hefty fine and prison time for violating the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. It's really a kind of consumer fraud. The legality has more to do with the fact that the cheese was improperly labeled. The FDA's Code of Federal Regulations regarding Parmesan requires that each ingredient be listed on the label. In this case, it wasn't. While much of the media's focus has been on wood pulp, cellulose is in fact a very common food additive. Most consumers don't know, but there's actually cellulose in all kinds of foods. Cereals, for instance. Basically anything that's labeled added fiber probably has cellulose in it. Cellulose isn't found in wheels of cheese, but in shredded variants where it's used as an anti-caking agent. It is a legal food-grade additive. In fact, the FDA allows cheese products to contain up to 4% cellulose. Any more than that might skirt the law but it's likely not all that harmful. You'd have to eat an awful lot of cheese for that to affect you. Fish bladder in beer. Is beer made with fish? Some are. The popular brand Guinness, for example, contains Isinglass, a gelatinous fish byproduct used to clarify the beer and help yeast settle. While most of the Isinglass is filtered out during brewing, traces of fish bladder still exist in the final pint. This doesn't affect the taste of the beer, Brewers often use fish bladders for the filtering of cask beers. Lots of breweries use isinglass, which is essentially a gelatin-like substance that's made of drying and processing the swim bladders of certain fish. It's part of a process called flocculation, and isinglass is still used because it can make beers appear clearer and brighter. Isinglass is a substance obtained from the dried swim bladders of fish. It's a form of collagen used mainly for the clarification or fining of some beer and wine. It can also be cooked into a paste for specialized gluing purposes. It's used to accelerate the fining of cask beers, which means it's used to clear the yeast more quickly. 
the isinglass yeast and other particles become a congealed mass that the beer makers then remove. Many people may not realize the beer in their pint glass may contain a product made from fish. Vegetarians and vegans out there better beware as not all beers are appropriate for herbivores. Bone Char and Sugar Bone char, which is used to process sugar, is made from the bones of cattle. The bones are sold to traders who then sell them back to the sugar industry. Bone char, often referred to as natural carbon, is widely used by the sugar industry as a decolorizing filter which allows the sugar cane to achieve its desirable white color. Bone char is also used in other types of sugar. Brown sugar is created by adding molasses to refined sugar, so companies that use bone char in the production of their regular sugar also use it in the production of their brown sugar. Confectioner's sugar, refined sugar mixed with cornstarch, made by these companies also involves the use of it. Fructose may but does not typically involve a bone char filter. Supermarket brands of sugar obtain their sugar from several different refineries, making it impossible to know whether it's been filtered with bone char. If you want to avoid all refined sugars, experts recommend alternatives that are not filtered with bone char. Additionally, beet sugar never involves the use of bone char and producers have developed a vegan confectioner's sugar which should be available in stores. However, it would be virtually impossible to find out the refining process used for the sugar in every product. Chewing gum made of lanolin Do you know that every time you're popping your favorite chewing gum in your mouth, you could actually be chewing a secretion from sheep's wool? Yeah, that's right. It's been found that chewing gum contains lanolin, which is a waxy secretion from the sebaceous glands of skin of sheep. Its function is to make sheep's wool waterproof. For this reason, lanolin is generally an ingredient in skin products. But what about using it as an ingredient in chewing gum? The innocent-looking chewing gum might not be as innocuous as you thought. Since lanolin is present as a component of chewing gum base, the rubbery substance that imparts the chewable characteristic to chewing gum, which is regarded as standardized, manufacturers do not need to reveal its individual ingredients. Lanolin is especially popular for use in skincare products because it's wildly hydrating, ultimately softening skin along the way, reducing wrinkles and for some, it's even a great treatment for dry hair. And while all that still sounds wonderful for products you don't actually ingest, lanolin is used in bubble gum as well. Just as it's used in skin and hair products to soften, it's used just the same way in chewing gum. As manufacturers begin with a gum base, it needs to be kept soft and chewy, and lanolin does just the trick. Maggots and Canned Mushrooms You'd hope that finding maggots in your food would just be a horrifying trick, but unfortunately, they're a genuine problem, as are many other disgusting contaminants. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has strict rules regarding what they call food defects. Still, they're more lenient than you might want to hear. The FDA considers it economically impractical to grow, harvest, or process raw products that are totally free of non-hazardous, naturally occurring, unavoidable defects. In short, that means you're allowed to have some real nasty stuff in there, just not too much. Maggots, for example, are especially problematic in canned produce like mushrooms. First, let's talk about what maggots really are. They're the legless larval stage of the common fly, and when you think about what abundant pests flies can be in our lives, you can only imagine how many larvae they've got wriggling around out there. The good news is that generally, maggots and insect parts and in food pose extremely little risk to your health. But how many maggots could there be in that can of mushrooms? The FDA inspects canned mushrooms in batches of at least six 100-gram portions. The average of these portions must have less than 20 maggots. Think about that the next time you buy some canned shrooms. Flammable Coffee Creamer Anti-caking agents are compounds that are added in small amounts to dry foods to prevent the particles from caking together and to ensure the product remains dry and free-flowing. These agents function by absorption of excess moisture or by coating particles to make them more water-repellent. Without anti-caking agents, dry soup, cake, and biscuit mixes would be clumped and chunky. Cappuccino and hot chocolate vending machines would not function properly, and premixes for manufacturing would be more difficult to use. Anti-caking agents are often found in milk and cream powders too. 
but only powdered coffee creamers are flammable. Non-dairy powdered creamer is flammable because it's a powder and has a high surface area to oxygen ratio. So, non-dairy creamer containers can be dangerous if they're not stored properly. When coffee creamer is dispersed in the air as a fine powder, it's flammable and can catch fire. Although it's not nearly as explosive and not so easy to burn as people may think, it can still pose a danger if not handled properly. Powdered creamer is flammable because one of its key ingredients, sodium aluminosilicate, can become combustible. Black powder is added to the creamer to prevent it from caking, and this creates an explosive fuel. The primary ingredient in coffee creamer is thus flammable. Titanium dioxide in milk Titanium dioxide is big business in the US, UK, and the Middle East and also in Europe, Asia, and Africa. Titanium dioxide accounts for 70% of the total production volume of pigments worldwide. Recently, there is concern that dairy and dairy alternatives like fat-free milk, cheese, yogurt, soy milk, and almond milk are processed with titanium dioxide to improve color and mimic the whiteness of whole milk without there being disclosure of this ingredient on the food label. Fat-free milk turns bluish when fat is removed, and this color can be a turnoff to the average consumer. So, the Food and Drug Administration allows the addition of titanium dioxide to fat-free, low-fat, and reduced-fat milk only when it's being used to maintain the standard color of milk, and it must be disclosed on the ingredient label. Under FDA ruling, milk is a product with a standard of identity. So if the color is off when fat is removed, then titanium dioxide may be added to match the appearance of standard whole milk. Some additions would have to be noted on the package ingredient statement along with an asterisk and the statement that's in an ingredient not normally found in the standard product. The problem is that we don't know the long-term effects of ingesting titanium dioxide. Panda Poo Tea Panda Dung Tea is soon to be the world's most expensive infusion at over $200 per cup. And that's why tea makers in Asia have been growing tea using the excrement from pandas living in nearby breeding centers. Wildlife experts claim that pandas' diets are loaded with antioxidants, as they consume mostly bamboo. Since they only absorb about a third or less of what they eat, a majority of the nutrients they consume end up in the fertilizer. In short, the claim is that the antioxidants already present in tea are multiplied when fertilized in this fashion. The fertilizer produced by pandas is said to have antioxidant properties similar to green tea, as the fertilizer reportedly has anti-cancer effects and claims the tea is smooth with a nutty taste and that it has a distinctive aroma. We're sure not many will argue about the distinctive aroma, but many question the motive and claims behind the tea. While some have already enjoyed a cup or two as it hit the markets, many who tried it weren't satisfied. Some have called the move a publicity stunt, while others respect the move for its eco-friendly, health-conscious intentions. What do scientists say about panda tea? While most studies show that green tea is undoubtedly loaded with health benefits due to its antioxidants, none have shown that panda excrement can increase these effects. Kopi Luwak Coffee Beans if you're well-versed in the world's strangest and most specialized coffees, you've probably already heard of Kopi Luwak, sometimes called Civet Coffee. Some people believe that this specialty coffee is the best in the world, but there's one big reason you may want to give it a pass, and it's not the impressive price. This is a famous Indonesian coffee that's been digested by an animal called an Asian palm civet. The civet is a cat-like creature that roams the forest of Bali at night eating ripe coffee cherries and excreting coffee beans. The beans are then gathered, cleaned, and roasted. The result, Kopi Luwak, or cat poop coffee. The history of this coffee starts way back in the 1700s when the Dutch first set up coffee plantations in Sumatra and Java. According to legend, the locals noticed that wild animals were eating the ripe coffee cherries and leaving the beans behind they were prohibited from harvesting coffee beans for themselves, so they started brewing coffee from these discarded beans. It's continued to be pretty popular ever since, and it's famous for something other than its unique processing. Its price. A cup of this coffee typically costs between $35 and $100, and the per pound price can range from $100 to $600. That's 20 to 60 times more expensive than average coffee. 
The truth about food can be a little alarming, but don't let that stop you from enjoying it. You just might want to read more labels and educate yourself on what exactly goes into your favorite foods. Mm -hmm.